DataGuard and ActiveDataGuard bring disaster recovery to the Oracle database. Just like the other availability database options, DataGuard is meant for databases that are critical for our customers. And critical meaning that companies just cannot afford these databases to be down because the applications or business processes that run on them are just too important for any interruptions to occur. First, let's set the context. Imagine a situation where we only have backups to safeguard our database. Imagine that a critical event takes place at this data center. Maybe there's a fire or maybe there's a flood. The database hardware is lost and all data on disk is also lost. Now we have two problems. First of all, the data. We could restore our database from the last backup, at least when this backup is taken in a remote location. However, we would not have any changes or transactions that have taken place after that last backup. And there's a second problem. Uh, we would have to rebuild our architecture very quickly and we will basically have some downtime because our database and all the applications that run on it will be down until the point that we finish this rebuild. So this could easily take days or even weeks. Both of these things are clearly not acceptable for critical applications. Strictly speaking, DataGuard is not a database option because it is bundled with the Enterprise Edition at no extra cost. Active DataGuard is a database option with its own price tag and it offers some things that the standard DataGuard doesn't and I will cover these differences. So let's look at the basic DataGuard. Imagine we have our primary data center with the database and applications running on them. DataGuard keeps an independent copy of this production database in a secondary location. So in principle, this means that for all the components that make up the primary database, there must also be an equivalent in this secondary data center. So that means hardware and software. So although sometimes companies choose to have a less performant architecture on the standby side for cost saving reasons. This secondary database is ideally not in the same building, but kilometers or even hundreds of kilometers away. The idea is that both data centers cannot be hit by the same incident or the same natural disaster. So how does it work? Only the database in the primary data center is serving applications. And obviously all kinds of transactions will arrive at this database and all kinds of data updates. And the mechanism of DataGuard is to keep the standby database in sync with the primary database. And it does that by continuously communicating the changes from primary to standby. During normal operation, only this primary database is active. The standby database is only receiving these updates. So now if something goes wrong on this primary database, so for example, there's a corruption on the storage, then a so-called failover will occur. This means that this standby database that was passive so far is started and the applications are redirected to send their queries and all their transactions to this secondary site, to the standby database instead. If you compare the situation with DataGuard to the situation that we had before with only backups, with DataGuard we reduce the data loss to almost nothing because we have been continuously synchronizing the standby with the primary database. And we also very significantly reduce the downtime because we don't have to rebuild our architecture, nor do we have to install any software. Our standby database is already ready to go. Now we come to Active Data Guard, and this can do everything the Data Guard can do, plus a bit more. Normally, with Data Guard, the standby database just sits there until a failure occurs. Apart from receiving updates from this primary database, these machines really don't do anything at all. They're not serving any application or any business process. The most important addition of active data guard compared to the basic data guard is that it allows usage of this standby database for more than just synchronizing the data. In fact, it allows access for read-only operations. And when would you might want to do that? Well, think about reporting, especially operational or daily transactional reporting. Think about data extracts or backups. Those secondary processes could potentially interfere or slow down the main purpose of that primary database. So by offloading these read-only workloads to the standby database, we keep the primary database free from any interferences. Compared to the basic data guard, active data guard is also a way for customers to get more return on investment from their secondary data center. 
By using this standby data center for reporting and backups, they get a lot more value out of it. That's it for DataGuard and ActiveDataGuard. Good luck!